Welcome, and thank you for choosing to watch this video series. This video series provides an overview of Los Angeles City Planning's ongoing efforts to update the Boyle Heights Community Plan. This presentation is also available in Spanish. Para ver la presentación en español, por favor visite el sitio de web indicado aquí. If you have been involved throughout the process to update the community plan, we appreciate your contributions and continued engagement. If this is your first time engaging with the Boyle Heights Community Plan, thank you for joining us. We look forward to your participation. This is part three of a four-part series of videos. This section, part three, is a closer look at the proposed policies and concepts that are part of the Boyle Heights Community Plan update. Part one provides an overview of community planning and the Boyle Heights Community Plan. Part two provides a look at zoning and the zoning tools that are used in the Boyle Heights Community Plan. And part four is an overview of the Community Benefits Program, an important part of the community plan strategy to bolster affordable housing in Boyle Heights. In addition to this video series, please visit our website for detailed informational handouts an interactive land use and zoning map, and the draft community benefits program. As we discussed in previous sections of this video series, the community plan update consists of three primary components. The policy document, which contains goals and policies, as well as a future implementation chapter. The land use map, a legally binding document that displays the location of land uses within the plan area. And the new zoning, which implements the policies and the community vision by updating the regulations of what can be built on each piece of land. This section will review the policy concepts of the Boyle Heights Community Plan update that are being addressed both through the policy document as well as through the land use and zoning. These policies are a direct response to the years of stakeholder input that have been heard since the community engagement process began in 2012 and include many of the themes that are shown here. The previous sections of this video series have reviewed what a community plan is and how zoning and land use work to implement the community vision. The community plan process takes stakeholder input, creates the draft policy document that sets the policy vision for the community for the next 20 years, and uses zoning and land use changes to implement that vision. The plan update process does not build any infrastructure or development projects, but sets the regulations for future projects in the community. In the following slides, we will examine how the proposed plan policies and zoning tools address some of the key overarching topics and issues that have been heard over the past several years of outreach. The plan meets the housing needs of current and future residents by maintaining existing multi-unit housing through new zoning tools, focusing new growth along corridors, and establishing a community benefits program tailored to Boyle Heights that incentivizes new affordable housing. Let's take a look at some of the unique zoning regulations that are proposed for the lower scale residential neighborhoods in Boyle Heights. Many residential properties in Boyle Heights are currently developed with a primary structure and a smaller secondary structure located close to or up to the rear property line. Under the existing zoning regulations, a 15-foot setback is required in most residential zones in Boyle Heights, making the existing structures at the back of these properties non-conforming. This makes it challenging to update the structure or to convert the structure into a residential use. Under the new draft zoning, the rear yard setback would be reduced to three feet, allowing for existing non-conforming structures to more easily be permitted or converted to residential units. This change in zoning regulations also allows for new units to be built where there is currently no structure at the rear of the property, which is an important tool to encourage gentle infill throughout the neighborhoods, allowing for multi-generational households to have more space or allowing for additional rental income for a homeowner. This also allows for new units to be built on existing multi-unit properties without losing the existing units to redevelopment, 
encouraging property owners to retain units that are subject to the rent stabilization ordinance and maintaining the more naturally occurring affordable housing stock in the plan area. In addition to reducing the rear yard setback throughout the neighborhoods, the proposed zoning also reduces the floor area ratio, or FAR, from what the existing regulations are. FAR regulates how many square feet of building can be built on a lot based on the size of the lot, which contributes to how large a building can be. This is achieved through the form districts that are applied to the neighborhoods, which reduce the FAR in residential areas from today's regulations to better reflect the existing building patterns. In this example, we look at a 6,000 square foot lot and compare what can be built under the existing and proposed regulations compared to what the current built conditions are throughout the neighborhood. This first diagram represents the development potential under the current zoning conditions. Current zoning allows for a maximum of four units, a maximum of 18,000 square feet of building floor area, and a height limit of 45 feet. Because of the current FAR allowance, this could yield very large units if built out to the maximum floor area, or FAR. The second diagram displays what housing development patterns actually look like in many residential areas in Boyle Heights today. Multi-unit developments with two to four units are typically seen on the low density properties in Boyle Heights, and a building square footage that is much lower than the maximum of what is allowed. Our example of existing built conditions that you see here is a residential property with approximately 1,700 square feet of building area, which results in less than a 0.5 to 1 FAR, which is much lower than the permitted 3 to 1 FAR in the zoning regulations. The diagram on the right shows how much development would be allowed under the proposed zoning the new regulations would still allow for a maximum of four units in this example, but a maximum of 6,000 square feet of building area. In addition, a new zoning tool called bulk plane is introduced, which requires that new development in the neighborhoods taper in the upper floor mass to ensure that the neighboring properties retain access to sunlight and to air. As demonstrated in this diagram, the proposed zoning allows for development patterns that are more compatible with the existing buildings in residential areas, while conserving the ability to build a similar amount of units on a given parcel. This reduction in FAR is intended to ensure that new developments fit the existing development patterns in the neighborhood and to not encourage redevelopment of the existing properties into larger luxury units or developments. This is a key zoning tool in the plan strategy to safeguard the existing households in Boyle Heights. In addition to encouraging infill on existing residential properties and reducing the FAR to increase compatibility with the existing building patterns, the plan directs the majority of new housing growth and development towards mixed use corridors near existing and future bus and rail service with the goal of alleviating development pressures on the existing residential neighborhoods. This map displays the land use designations for community center in the dark pink, neighborhood center in the light pink, and medium neighborhood residential in the orange salmon color, where there is a greater potential for housing development under the proposed regulations. This creates greater access to commercial uses and amenities, jobs, and schools, providing more access and opportunity to rely on environmentally friendly multimodal transit options, which also helps to slow the impacts of climate change. The plan also contains policies that support the diverse housing needs of the Boyle Heights community by incentivizing multi-unit developments that offer a range of housing unit types and sizes that accommodate the varying household sizes, the multi-generational households, single room occupants, and for independent seniors. To ensure that new housing development over the next several years include housing that is affordable to the Boyle Heights community, the plan includes a new proposed community benefits program, which incentivizes affordable housing with units for varying household sizes, 
with a particular focus in corridors and transit areas. The proposed Community Benefits Program tailors the incentives and affordability requirements in today's citywide transit-oriented communities guidelines, often referred to as TOC. This map shows areas that qualify for TOC affordable housing incentives today in the blue shaded area and the areas covered by the proposed Community Benefits Program in the orange color. For more details on the Community Benefits Program, including the eligibility requirements and the incentives, please refer to part four of this presentation series. In addition to the proposed plan's policies and zoning tools, the plan supports existing programs and regulations at the local and state level that protect households and residents. The City of Los Angeles has policies in place to safeguard households, including the Rent Stabilization Ordinance, or RSO, the Just Cause Eviction Ordinance, and the City of Los Angeles's Condominium Conversion Regulation. The City also works in cooperation with the State of California in implementing housing protection measures such as Senate Bill 330, Assembly Bill 2222, and the Ellis Act. For more information on these programs, please refer to the Local and State Measures to Safeguard Households fact sheet on our website. In addition to accessible and affordable housing for all residents of Boyle Heights, access to good local jobs has been a recurring theme throughout the plan update process. Small businesses have been a part of the Boyle Heights culture and legacy for over a century and existing businesses are an asset to the community and to the region. The proposed plan highlights the community's diverse economy and promotes local jobs and small business through zoning for small businesses, maintaining industrial land for jobs, and the plan provides policy and zoning support for street vending, recognizing its vital role in the local economy for local entrepreneurs. In order to protect existing locally owned businesses, as well as better facilitate and support new entrepreneurs in expanding small business in the community, the plan maximizes opportunities for small business by limiting the size of new commercial tenant spaces on certain corridors throughout the neighborhood. To reflect the existing pattern of small business, the size is limited to 5,000 square feet on corridors such as Cesar Chavez and Wabash Avenue, shown here in the lighter blue turquoise color. On corridors such as Soto Street and Whittier Boulevard, shown in dark blue, the zoning will limit new commercial establishments to 50,000 square feet. Limiting new tenant sizes requires new development to provide smaller and therefore more affordable commercial spaces for business and limits the combination of existing small business space into larger spaces for big box and chain stores, helping to maintain the existing small businesses in the community. To maintain the local jobs supported in the industrial areas on the southern and western boundaries of the plan, the update proposes to maintain the majority of this land for jobs producing uses in the new zoning. However, due to input received over the years relating to environmental injustice and public health concerns, Certain heavy industrial zones adjacent to residential and other sensitive uses are proposed to change to light industrial, increasing compatibility between uses. This map shows the existing industrial land on the left-hand map and the proposed industrial land on the right-hand map. The heavy industrial is shown in dark blue and the light industrial in lighter blue. The change from heavy industrial to light industrial is primarily along the western boundary, adjacent to the LA River, near the upcoming Sixth Street Park project and near existing housing, as well as in the area south of Olympic Boulevard, to create greater distance between the existing residential areas north of Olympic and the heavy industrial uses in the southernmost portion of Boyle Heights and in neighboring Vernon. Throughout the community plan update process, Stakeholders have voiced the importance of street vending playing an important role in the local economy. Street vending is a key source of fresh and prepared foods in areas that are underserved by major grocery chains, and they are a means to activate the public realm, as well as providing opportunities for entrepreneurship. 
The plan supports current street vending efforts and contains policies that encourage cleaning, preparation, and disposal facilities as part of future projects in the community. With its legacy of small businesses and built as one of Los Angeles's earliest residential suburbs, Boyle Heights is regarded as a community with deep roots and a rich history. The majority of its buildings were built in the first half of the 20th century, and the neighborhood has been infused with the rich cultural expression of generations of immigrants that have made Boyle Heights home over the past century or more, both through architecture and through the businesses that have called Boyle Heights home for decades. Boyle Heights is unique in its history and character and plays an important role of the city of Los Angeles as a cultural resource. The plan maintains this rich cultural history and identity of Boyle Heights through zoning to allow for neighborhood amenities throughout the neighborhood, including corner stores or tienditas, and through design standards to ensure that new development reflects existing buildings in areas identified in the city's survey LA. Tienditas, or corner stores, are essential in providing the Boyle Heights community with food items and household goods within walking distance. This has become an especially important resource during the COVID-19 pandemic for residents who are unable to travel to a larger, more centralized store. Tienditas also support aging in place, or the ability to live in one's own home and community safely, independently, and comfortably regardless of age, income, or ability level. Many tienditas currently exist in Boyle Heights today in areas zoned for residential uses only, meaning that they are currently non-conforming and this also prevents new ones from opening in residential areas. New zoning regulations in the use districts allow limited introduction of non-residential uses, such as new corner stores, to open in the residential neighborhoods of Boyle Heights, providing new opportunities for small business and providing more residents with access to food and household goods. These uses are subject to the following limitations, a maximum of 1,500 square feet in size, which reflects the existing scale of current tienditas, limited hours of operation, recognizing that these will be located adjacent to existing residential uses, and they can only be located on a corner property to prevent entire blocks in the residential areas from changing from residential uses to commercial uses throughout the neighborhoods. The plan also includes policies and programs that encourage these corner stores to provide fresh produce and groceries to the community, with future programs and partnerships identified to help incentivize sales of fresh produce in these stores. In addition to zoning to allow for new commercial amenities in the residential neighborhoods, the plan uses zoning to ensure that new development is reflective of the existing character in areas of the community identified as potentially historic. Boyle Heights is home to many historic buildings and landmarks, one of the most notable being the historic commercial corridor of Cesar et Chavez Boulevard between Mott Street and Cumming Street, which is also designated as a Los Angeles Historic Cultural Monument known as the Brooklyn Avenue Neighborhood Corridor. This street has a distinct character and has played a historic role through decades and generations of Boyle Heights residents and businesses. The plan includes several policies that maintain the existing character found on Cesar Chavez Boulevard, such as encouraging the reuse of existing buildings along Cesar Chavez and ensuring that new developments are compatible with the existing character of the buildings on the street. This will be addressed through the new zoning, specifically through a special character frontage that will be applied to this stretch of Cesar Chavez, which requires new buildings to have frequent entrances, high transparency, meaning lots of windows, and to use some of the design elements that are found on buildings today in the new development, such as the vertical and horizontal lines that are typically seen on the brick buildings along the street today. This character frontage is a component of the new zoning, and it does not require additional design review procedures. In addition, the form district that is applied to this stretch of Cesar Chavez limits new buildings to two stories in height, with an option to reach four stories if the project provides affordable housing, 
to better reflect the distinct historic character of the street today. For more details on the regulations contained in the character frontages and form districts, please view part two of this video series. A similar approach is being taken with certain residential pockets in the community that have been identified as potentially historic in the city's Survey LA, which is the city's historic resources survey. These areas will be zoned with a residential character frontage. Specifically, this frontage requires that new homes have a porch and a pitched roof, that they have a door facing the street, and it requires windows that are similar to the historic architectural styles at the time. The residential character frontage will be applied to the areas shown in orange on the map. The area between the 101 and Interstate 5 freeways, as well as on certain streets near Hollenbeck Park. Existing land use patterns in Boyle Heights create many areas where industrial and residential land are adjacent. The mix of industrial uses near residential areas and other sensitive uses, coupled with the history of the freeway construction that crisscrossed the community and that so many Angelinos travel daily, have made Boyle Heights residents bear the burden of contamination from freeways, truck traffic, and industrial land. Residents and community groups have mobilized around issues of environmental injustice in the community for decades. While many Boyle Heights residents use cars to get to school, work, or run errands, many residents also rely on other modes of transportation, including buses and the Metro L Line, formerly known as the Gold Line, and connections to these transit modes often require additional travel as users of bicycle lanes or sidewalks. It is critical that there are safe means of travel, not just for car users in Boyle Heights, but for all users of the street and the public realm. The plan addresses issues of community health and environmental injustice by limiting new polluting uses near residential uses, incorporating Clean Up Green Up or KUGU regulations into the new zoning, and supporting existing community initiatives for mobility improvements to make streets and the public realm safer for all users. About 20% of Boyle Heights has historically been zoned to allow industrial and manufacturing uses. Over the decades, industrial land has created local employment opportunities. While the Boyle Heights Community Plan seeks to maintain much of the industrial land for current and future employment, the plan proposes numerous changes to address compatibility with the surrounding residential community to better protect the health and well being of those who call Boyle Heights home. The policies contained in the plan discourage potentially disruptive or hazardous uses on streets that serve as boundaries between industrial and residential areas. Proposed zoning tools require that new or rehabilitated industrial facilities near residential areas have appropriate screening, landscaping, and enclosure provisions necessary for preventing exposure to environmental hazards. And it also promotes the phasing out and relocation of facilities that handle hazardous materials near residents and schools. To further address incompatible land uses near residential zones, the plan takes measures to limit new auto-related uses from locating near residential uses and implements this policy through zone changes along major corridors in Boyle Heights, such as First Street, Wabash Avenue, and Whittier Boulevard. With the new zoning, these corridors will no longer allow new auto-related uses such as auto repair, auto body shops, and gas stations to open. This map shows the areas within the plan where new auto-related uses will be permitted to open, which includes the majority of the industrial areas in Boyle Heights, as well as select locations near freeway on and off ramps. These changes are in line with moving hazardous uses away from residential areas and improving compatibility between these uses in Boyle Heights, which we have heard as a priority over the years of this plan update. The Clean Up Green Up, or KUGU, Ordinance Number 184246, was adopted in June of 2016, and it was a years-long community-driven effort to establish green zones, which means that it adopted new standards and regulations to protect sensitive or residential uses from nearby heavy and noxious uses. This ordinance was adopted as an overlay to add additional restrictions in communities impacted by heavy industrial uses which includes Boyle Heights, 
as well as the communities of Wilmington and Sun Valley Pacoima, and it was initially adopted as a pilot program. As part of the Boyle Heights Community Plan update, the regulations from KUGU will be incorporated into the proposed development standards regulations and use district regulations for the Boyle Heights Community Plan area, embedding them as part of the permanent zoning regulations for the community. Examples include enclosure and buffering standards, as well as distancing requirements for new uses. In addition to adopting zoning regulations and policies to address environmental injustices throughout the plan, the plan also supports community initiatives that bring attention to pedestrian and bicycle safety improvements. Traffic crashes are the leading cause of death for school-aged children in Los Angeles. Streets that are safe for children are safer for everyone, including older adults who are also disproportionately impacted by severe and fatal traffic crashes in Los Angeles. Streets such as Lorena, Olympic, Soto, and Cesar Chavez are identified on the High Injury Network. It is crucial that the plan supports community initiatives that address pedestrian and bicycle safety improvements. With the increased levels of tra truck traffic throughout Boyle Heights, it is also important to prioritize engineering and street design improvements, such as protected bicycle lanes to improve the function and safety of streets like Soto and traffic calming measures in residential and industrial collector streets. As a community that has been impacted by decades of environmental injustice, Boyle Heights is also strongly impacted by a changing climate, with increased days of unhealthy air and excessive heat directly affecting health and wellness in the community. As a neighborhood bisected by freeways, Boyle Heights residents are also disproportionately impacted by car pollution from the region's reliance on automobiles. In addition, greenhouse gases produced by cities like Los Angeles contribute significantly to droughts, extreme heat, sea level rise, and destructive wildfires that impact the region and the state. Planning for the future requires that the Boyle Heights Community Plan update incorporates policies that aim to reduce impacts on the environment and adapt to the current and future needs of residents. The plan addresses issues of climate change through directing future housing growth closer to transit and zoning for a greater mix of uses, allowing residents to access jobs and amenities through various modes of transportation and includes policies to support more shade trees and sustainable development. Plan policies accommodate growth near more sustainable transit options that reduce individual vehicle miles traveled and reduce overall vehicle traffic, leading to reduced emissions. Promoting development around transit that mixes residential and neighborhood serving commercial uses and jobs provides options for current and future residents to more easily access housing, jobs, school, or run errands without relying on a personal vehicle. Parking requirements are also reduced for housing projects within walking distance of major transit stations and stops, and development regulations are applied through form districts and frontages that require new buildings to be more pedestrian friendly, leading to an overall more pedestrian friendly district near major transit stations. Plan policies accommodate growth near more sustainable transit options that reduce individual vehicle miles traveled and reduce overall vehicle traffic, leading to reduced emissions. Promoting development around transit that mixes residential and neighborhood serving commercial uses and jobs provides options for current and future residents to more easily access housing, jobs, school, or run errands without relying on a personal vehicle. Planned policies establish objectives for improving streets for pedestrians and bicyclists and reorganizing streets for safety. And they explore ways to connect neighborhoods divided by freeways through pedestrian improvements such as lighting and landscaping under freeway underpasses. In addition to zoning regulations that plan for a more sustainable land use pattern in Boyle Heights, the plan also contains policies to contribute to more sustainable patterns of development in new projects in the community. There are several benefits to increasing the neighborhood's urban tree canopy, from reducing temperatures and urban heat island effects, to improving air quality and creating a pleasant pedestrian-friendly public realm. The plan encourages planting of shade trees in the public right-of-way and on private property, as well as facilitates street tree maintenance, providing shade and giving scale to residential and commercial streets in the neighborhood. 
examples of goals and policies from the plan text are highlighted here. The timeline here shows our current phase and what our next steps are. Last September, City Planning released the updated Community Plan document along with the Draft Community Benefits Program and Draft Zoning for Boyle Heights. In the coming months, we will release a Draft EIR, which is the environmental review of the potential environmental impacts of the proposed plan. After a comment period for the Draft EIR, we will hold a public hearing on the Draft Plan and Zoning Changes, which kicks off the adoption process for the Community Plan. After the public hearing, a recommended plan will be brought to the City Planning Commission and finally adopted by the City Council. Leading up to and during the entire adoption process, there are many opportunities for continued public input, feedback, and comments. Thank you for viewing part three of this four-part video series. Please view the other three parts for additional information related to the Boyle Heights Community Plan update which you can find on our website at planningforla.org slash bhplan. You can also visit our website for the draft plan document, community benefits program, as well as the interactive zoning map. In addition, on our website, you can sign up for our email list to be notified of future releases and public hearing dates. Thank you for your continued involvement in the community planning process.